All right, my coders and codies, welcome back to another very exciting video. And I'm so excited about this one because it's essentially the OCD organizer's dream. It just ticks all the boxes for making a really awesome coding challenge. And what we're gonna build is a Python script that's gonna help keep our desktops completely clutter free. So essentially what we're gonna do is we're gonna automate the desktop cleanup. So yeah, I guess that's pretty much it for the intro. So let's get started. All right, so what, what I'm thinking that we're going to start with is just to kind of write down the requirements for this build, basically. So try to figure out what we need to get done, what we need the program to be able to do. And uh, then we'll get into actually building out each separate thing. Uh, so I'm going to start with that. All right, so uh, these are the requirements that I've come up with. It needs to track the desktop. We've done this before in other videos. If you look at my video called Super Quick Python Automation Ideas, one of the ideas in that video was to move files between different folders. And I suggested that you could use this to clean up your downloads folder so that you automatically, as soon as something get put, gets put into the downloads folder, you just move it into where you want it to be. Uh, this is basically what we're going to do now, but for the desktop. So I'm probably going to just copy that pretty much. And since I didn't go through kind of what everything was in that video and how it works, I'm just going to copy that and go through actually and say like what the different parts do and why I use the different things. And then we want it to move files into that folder. We want it to run in the background. So that's something that some of you have been asking for as well is how to actually make a Python script run constantly in the background so you don't have to like uh, run it manually every time you want it to, to run. So we're going to go into that and actually do that properly uh, or as properly as I can do it. Okay, and then system for file organization. We need to basically create some sort of system for actually organizing the different files and then we need to find all the different file types basically so i need to just google to see what file types there are uh, because we want to essentially be able to track all different file types but we're also going to add a safety net so that if there's a file that we haven't got in our list then it'll get added to like a folder called uh, uncategorized or something like that so now i think what i want to do is try to come up with a system for file organization basically this i think is the going to be the main part of the build like figuring out how to actually organize the different things and then this is just going to be a short explanation of how i make this run in the background all right so uh, i'm going to get into just creating the system for file organization and i'm just going to make this up as best as i can um, hopefully it'll be good All right, so I think I think I've come up with uh, the system, which was kind of what I was, what I was thinking before as well. And essentially, we're going to create folders for each file type category. So, images, video, audio, text, etc. There's going to be a couple different ones. I can't. I probably can't capture all the different types. Um, but yeah, something like that. And then within each folder, so within the images folder. We might have either separate, like for instance, images. There are several different types of images that you can download. Like there's PNG and JPEG, and there's a couple other ones I don't remember right now, but there are a couple other ones. And then within these folders, we're going to have subfolders that are going to be structured by the dates. So the first subfolder is going to be the year, so 2019. So all the files that get added in 2019 get added into the 2019 folder and then within that we're going to have all the different months so folders for each month and then the file gets added to the corresponding month uh, to when it was added and then within the month folder we're going to have either a subfolder called days so we're going to have like day one day two etc uh, or we're just going to have the files i'm not sure which one is going to be the best because like I said before, we, we want to go into detail, but we don't want to go into too much detail because then it kind of gets overcomplicated. Um, and I think that, at least for me, I don't add that much stuff to my desktop on a daily basis that 
it would end up being like a huge folder for one month. Uh, what you could do is you could probably divide it into maybe weeks. I think that would make more sense. But for now, we're just going to keep it at as all the files are going to be added into the month folder. That's going to be our structure. And uh, now let's get to actually building this thing out. So uh, we're going to start by just, like I said, copying and pasting uh, the code from the previous one that I built. And then I'm going to go through and explain kind of what it does. All right, so now we've actually, I, I did have some problems uh, trying to figure out how to actually make this work again, but now it seems to be working and uh, basically I've created a folder called Cal here on my desktop. So we run it. So right now it's running. It's checking the desktop to see whether we put a new file there. So now we can just create a new file. Let's call it hello.txt. And what it should do is you should, I don't know if you can, you'll see this actually. Wait, let's move my head away. For now all right so right now we're creating a new text file like so you can see it gets added and then it gets removed and as you can see it ends up here hello.txt and if we create another one it gets added again to yeah so here you go hello.txt2 so we just add another number to it if there's another file already existing with the same name so that means that we won't get the problem of like duplicates, it will still work. Uh, although I guess that might be a problem that it says hello.txt2. Uh, let's see what happens if we add an image or something. So let's go to recents and let's add this image back, going live. All right, so now as you can see this right here, this one has the same name as this one. And if we move that out into the desktop. Okay, so this is a problem because right now it just appends the number to the end of the file. And that means that we, we basically changed the file type from being a JPEG to uh, a JPEG2, which is not actually a file name. So that's something that we need to fix. We need to make sure that it doesn't append the number to the file type. It should only append the number to the name. Okay. So that's something that we need to fix. So I'll do that right now and then we'll go through how this whole script kind of works. Okay, so now I think it works. Um, I've made it so that it should rename the files and not change the extension. So basically we're gonna take this image PNG, move that here so that just, since we don't have another image or another file named that name, it just adds it as it is. And uh, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add the same file again with the same exact name and what it should do is it should do post2.png so basically now it re renames the first part of the of the file name and keeps the extension the same uh, so we're not actually modifying what file type it is which is good all right so let me try to explain this as best as i can so essentially what we have is this. This is Watchdog, it's a library that I use. And uh, what that does is it essentially tracks, uh, it, it does a lot of things, but what I use it for is for tracking folders. Okay, so essentially what we're doing right now is we're tracking the desktop, the, the, the path to the desktop as a folder. And then this uh, Watchdog basically has something called file system event handler, which has a sub method, which is called uh, on modified. 
and that basically tracks so anytime something happens an event happens we add a new file or something to the desktop uh, it triggers this method uh, that runs so basically what we do then is we just run through this directory which is the desktop folder and we just check all the files in that folder to see if any new files have been added so we check all the files and we make sure that we're not changing the actual folder so we're not trying to put the folder within itself and then what we do is we check what the file name is and if it's not cal then we can go ahead and try to either move it into the folder or rename it so what we want to do is we want to check whether our folder already contains another uh, file named the exact same thing and if it does then we want to I just basically added an i variable that we just increment for each file that already exists. So as you can see here, we already have a file named post.png. So what we do then is we increment uh, the i by one. So we then create post2.png. And then if we add another one called post.png, it'll be called post3.png and so on. I feel like this didn't really make sense when I explained it, but I think I think you understand. So that means that we've added a safety net so that we don't accidentally replace any files, uh, which can be a problem because if we add two files with the same name, then it might automatically replace that file or delete it or do something weird. And then what we use is os.rename. And that basically needs the path to the original file and then the path to the new place where you want to put the file. So this is the path to where the original file is. And then you also add the file name. And this now becomes the path to where we want to put the file. So folder destination, which is this folder. And then we also add the new name of that file, which is going to be whatever we've come up with the name to be. So that's how that works. What we need to do now is we need to create a system for actually organizing this file, these files. And we already have that system in here uh, mapped out for us. So now the next step is going to be basically to create, uh, I think, I think I'll manually create the folders that I want to like have as the main categories. So images, video, audio, text because I don't think it makes sense right now to have the program do that uh, by itself. But then within these folders, we're going to have subfolders. So they're going to be the year, month, and then all the files. And that's going to be created automatically. So we're going to automate that process. But the main categories, I think it makes sense to just do them on my own um, based on the most common file types that I use. So first we're going to try to just figure out what are the most common file types. And based on that, I'm going to create the different folders. And then we're going to create like a bunch of different cases for all the different file types. And uh, that should then sort them into the right folders automatically. So that's the next step, finding out what are the different file types. Okay, so I think this is a good place to take a break. I decided to divide this video up into a part one and part two. And there's a link in the description to part two of this video where we finish the script off. And you don't want to miss it. It really turns out great. So go watch it. Also, before you go, I'll be getting back into my streaming on Twitch starting on Monday. So every Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. Central European time, I'll be live coding stuff on Twitch. And also, since I did a community post here on YouTube asking what you guys think I should do more videos on, and a lot of you guys were asking for more Flutter and more Python, and you also wanted to see me build something from start to finish, I decided that on Monday streams, I'll be starting a new series called Building an App from Scratch. And in this series, I will be essentially building an app from scratch using Flutter and Python. And this video will also get uploaded to YouTube every Tuesday at 3 p.m. So either you can join me live on Mondays at 2 p.m. on Twitch, or you can watch it back on Tuesdays when I've uploaded it to YouTube. And what we're gonna do in this series is literally go from an idea to a finished app. And it's gonna be really exciting stuff. We're gonna go through app design, front end, back end, REST APIs. It's gonna be full on, so don't miss it. But anyway, that's it for this one. I hope I'll see you in the next one.